Hello everyone. Welcome to Food Technology Study Program, Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agricultural Engineering, IBB University. Welcome back to ITP 322 Food Safety and Sanitation course. My name is Rati Dewanti Hariadi. I'm a professor in food microbiology at IBB University. Today, we are going to meet for the fourth time on the topic number four on indicators and index microorganisms. The topic will cover the background, concept of indicator microorganisms, types of indicator microorganisms and the method for its testing, index microorganism, pathogen in food safety and the method of analysis, testing of spoilage, standard for pathogen and indicators, and then constraints and development on the concept of indicator microorganisms. If you completed this lecture, you are expected to be able to describe the concept of indicator microorganisms, differentiate index and indicator microorganism, describe methods for the analysis and standard for indicator microorganisms, describe pathogen in food safety, and the method for the analysis as well as standard for pathogens in foods, and describe testing for spoilage. Okay, let's start with the background of the indicator microorganisms. We all realize that it is impossible to test food products or water for all known pathogens to assure its quality as well as safety. That's why at the end of 1800 or early 1900, people proposed the concept of indicator microorganism. This indicator microorganisms refers to a microorganisms or a group of microorganisms that can be used to indicate the quality or hygienic status of the food product, dietary supplements, water, and or environment. The concept came about the initial idea that uh, the certain group of microorganisms was thought to be able to index the presence of fecal material and acted as a surrogate for pathogens such as salmonella. However, the testing for this organism shall be simpler and faster. The indicator microorganisms then were expected to indicate the possibility of the presence of pathogens such as salmonella, suggest in compliance of sanitation implementation, as well as process failure. Therefore, there are several criteria for indicator microorganism. One, it must be present in the presence of pathogen, but absence in a food that are not contaminated, must be present in a number greater than pathogens, and they survive better or similar to that of pathogen. It should not be harmful for human health, and the testing should be inexpensive and easy. There are several indicator microorganisms that has been used or developed since then, the first one, the oldest one, was coliform, which was recommended in the early 1900 for indicator of water. Fecal coliform and then E. coli were also used because they were thought to be more specific in indicating the potential presence of a pathogen. In the US, the pasteurized milk ordinance requires coliform testing for milk and milk products. Let's talk about each of the indicator microorganism. The oldest indicator is coliform. This comprises uh, the group of gram-negative bacteria with uh, several chemical or biochemical characteristics as you see here. It mainly ferment lactose and produce gas and acid at 35 degrees C. The coliform consists of Citrobacter, Enterobacter, Escherichia, Klebsiella, Serratia, and Hafnia. Coliform is 
microbiota or microflora in human and animal intestine, although some are found naturally in soil and water. The main uh, species in the coliform group is Escherichia coli or E. coli. Now, because some of the coliform can be present outside the intestine, a positive testing of coliform does not always indicate fecal contamination. The next choice would be fecal coliform. This is a coliform that could ferment lactose at a higher temperature. That's why this group is also called as thermotolerant coliform. This group is thought to be a better indicator for fecal contamination than coliform. It consists of a smaller group, E. coli and Klebsiella spp. E. coli, the predominant bacterium in fecal materials of mammals, is also used as indicator microorganism. This bacteria does not grow significantly in water, but it survives well for weeks in water. Then they are also useful for use as indicators in drinking water system. E. coli also fulfills all criteria that define total coliform and fecal coliform, and using several biochemical assay, it can be differentiated from Klebsiella. During the development of indicator microorganisms, people also use a larger group of uh, bacteria such as Enterobacteriaceae. Enterobacteriaceae is a family that consists of uh, 20 genera, including E. coli, coliform, as well as pathogenic bacteria such as Salmonella, Sigella, and Yersinia. This group of uh, bacteria was initially proposed as an alternative indicator for coliform because it tested all family members, including pathogenic bacteria. It is also thought to be a better indicator for the implementation of sanitation because they are more resistant in the environment than coliform. Enterobacteriaceae is different from coliform in terms of the use of uh, carbohydrate, uh, E. coli or coliform ferment lactose, while Enterobacteriaceae ferment glucose. So as you can see here, uh, initially people use a coliform and it's then developed into a smaller group such as fecal coliform, E. coli, but then they also use a larger group, i.e. Enterobacteriaceae. In addition to the four groups, people also use fecal streptococci as indicator microorganisms. This group of bacteria are gram-positive, round, single or in a chain, and can grow at 44.5 degrees C in the presence of bile and azide. The group consists of Streptococcus faecalis, Streptococcus physium, Streptococcus durans, Streptococcus bovis, and equinus. The group, also known as Enterobacter faecalis, it is used as indicator because they live in human intestine, thus can indicate fecal contamination. Another advantage of using this bacterium is because it survives better than E. coli, therefore it is very useful as indicator microorganism when the distance between sampling point and analysis laboratory is far, or when disinfection has been applied that thought to kill coliform. When compared to E. coli, Fecal streptococci is less likely to be present in human and pets, as you can see from the ratio mentioned here, and they are more likely to be present in warm-blooded animal. The problems with the use of uh, streptococcus faecalis as indicator is the fact that uh, some strep faecalis are not found in the intestine, and the testing usually takes longer time, and two, uh, such as Streptococcus bovis and Equinus are never found in the human intestine. Strep bovis is exclusively found in cows or cattle, while Equinus is found in horse. The other indicator microorganism is Clostridium perfringens. This gram-positive, rod-shaped 
anaerobic spore forming and sulfate reducer bacteria can be used as indicator because they live in human and animals intestine the drawback of the use of this bacterium is uh, they are found in environment the specificity of the test is low and it is a pathogen thus the assay is not safe therefore the test uh, or the use of this bacterium as indicator is rare so how do we analyze indicators in food we all know that one of the reason why we develop the indicator concept is the fact that testing a pathogen in food is very complex however testing of indicators also uh, takes several steps the first one is called presumptive tests generally used uh, lactose and uh, production of gas is the positive result followed by uh, the growth on uh, specific media such as emb agar and vrb vrb overlay that is uh, putting a vrb on a, a petri dishes uh, place your sample there and then overlay with a vrb agar again next step is a complete test which require a retesting of the gas production from lactose followed by identification using infect test indole methyl red box proscaur and citrate The analysis of E. coli also uh, undergone some modification. The presumptive tests, for example, that are uh, usually depend on the gas production from uh, lactose, can be modified to accommodate E. coli that are not anaerogenic by adding a MUG that shows uh, gas and fluorescence. Uh, therefore, uh, you can capture uh, anaerogenic E. coli. You have to note though here that 5% of the E. coli also does not produce uh, the enzyme beta-glucuronidase that can produce the fluorescence. The confirmation test using VRB, VRB overlay usually cause a poor resuscitation because of the injured cells. To recover this injured cell, uh, we are using TSA or MUG instead of a VRB overlay. For identification tests, we are using uh, impact test and uh, it has been uh, available in the market several uh, modified uh, testing such as uh, rapid test API 20E. This is an example of API 20E for the identification of E. coli and many other enteric uh, bacteria. This slide shows you uh, the analysis of E. coli in milk. You can see the path in the left is the whole complete testing from the presumptive test up to the identification. You can also do only the coliform MPN by uh, looking at the production of gas from lactose. Or you can use uh, VRB, VRV overlay or other overlay to uh, enumerate E. coli from the samples. The analysis of enterobacteriaceae also consists of several steps, uh, dilution, inoculation on a specific media, followed by uh, identification of typical colonies, and then several biochemical tests. Okay, now we are going to learn about index microorganism. Uh, it turns out that indicator organisms do not necessarily index the presence of pathogen. Presence of coliform and or E. coli suggests fecal contamination, but does not necessarily suggest presence of enteric pathogen such as uh, E. coli 015787 or Salmonella. An indicator could generally be correlated with fecal contamination or insanitary handling. Therefore, people then develop the concept of index microorganisms. Index microorganism is an indicator microorganism that could index the presence of pathogen. A good example would be Listeria. Listeria is considered as index for almost all species of Listeria, including the important pathogenic bacterium Listeria monocytogenes. Now we all know that uh, testing of indicator microorganism 
to index pathogen is often inadequate, and the fast development of analytical methods have led to the need uh, to assay for some pathogen. Additionally, based on historical data, some products must be certifiably free of certain microorganisms. For example, refrigerated ready-to-eat products supporting listeria growth must be free of listeria monocytogenes. For pathogen, uh, they develop the concept of zero tolerance and usually is applicable for a particular pathogen in a specified high-risk food. Testing of pathogens is a parameter for food safety. The following shows you uh, several microbiological criteria for pathogens in food. Salmonella in powdered milk, for example, is regulated to be negative in 25 grams with an N equal to 5, that means 5 randomly picked samples. Meanwhile, Canadian regulation require also a negative salmonella in 25 grams, however, the number of samples is 20. Codex Alimentarius in 2009 regulated or uh, giving a guidance on Listeria monocytogenes in ready to eat. For products that support the growth of Listeria monocytogenes, you should pick five samples and none of them can be positive in 25 grams. Meanwhile, for products not supporting Listeria monocytogenes growth, you pick five samples and none of them can exceed 100 colony per gram. There is also regulation for a Chronobacter SPP in powdered infant formula as well as E. coli 0157 H7 in unpasteurized juice. Analysis of pathogen is a complex process. Generally, analysis of pathogen comprises of several steps. The first is pre-enrichment in which you grow in a rich medium to recover injured cells. The drawback of this process, of course, you also enrich the non-target microorganisms. Therefore, this step is usually followed by selective enrichment, in which you use a medium containing inhibitory substances for non-target microorganisms. The step is then followed by isolation, identification, and confirmation, usually using biochemical and serological tests. This slide shows you the analysis of salmonella according to the ISO method that has been adopted by Indonesian government. The next step is salmonella analysis using a bacteriological analytical manual method. Uh, all have the same steps, however, they employ different kind of media. This is a picture of a salmonella grown or colony of salmonella on a different uh, isolation media. Now we know that people test uh, indicated microorganism to see how sanitary a production process has uh, been applied to a product, test for pathogen to predict the safety. However, spoilage is of concern for industry also because it could lead to economic loss. The spoilage microorganism or utility microorganism is a group of bacteria which could determine the shelf life of foods. There are several group of bacteria that usually are tested such as total plate count or aerobic plate count or mesophilic aerobic plate count or total yeast count, total mold count as well as total yeast and mold count. In this last slide, I would like to present you the constraints and development of the concept of index and indicator microorganisms. We learned that index microorganisms often is not effective in indexing the presence of pathogen because both index microorganisms and pathogens are usually present at low number. In addition, a fecal coliform in raw food is a good fecal indicator, but it's not appropriate index microorganism because it does not always indicate the presence of salmonella or E. coli 0157 H7. Thermotolerant E. coliform or fecal coliform is also not 
a good indicator for fecal contamination in refrigerated processed food, although it shows inadequacy of refrigeration or post-processing contamination. So the development of this concept has come to the thought that maybe we will need indicator microorganism for a specific food. That's all for today's lecture. Uh, I hope you learn now about the indicator microorganisms, index microorganisms, the difference with uh, pathogen as well as foliage microorganisms, and uh, its testing in terms of food quality and safety. See you again next week. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.